Hey guys, this is Mindcast with your host, Kevin Seaman, where we talk about what's going on in your head. Hi, this is your host of Mindcast, Kevin Seaman. Have you ever been sitting somewhere and a song comes on that reminds you of someone you used to know, or perhaps even dated? And it may put you in a good mood or touch an emotional feeling deep inside you that you hadn't thought of for a very long time. Or maybe you hear a song that puts you into a sad state. Maybe it reminds you of a time in your life when you were going through a tough time. Maybe you lost someone close to you, and hearing that song brings you back to that time and the associated feelings. Now here's another question for you. Have you ever had a certain food or drink that you used to love, and this one time it made you feel sick or feel really nasty? I'll bet to this day you won't go near that same thing you used to slam down. Have you ever experienced that? Most people have. Think about it. You didn't have to discipline yourself not to indulge in it. I'm also pretty sure you didn't have to motivate yourself not to go near it. It just happened. You just had an absolute disdain for that, and it stayed with you. Maybe even the thought of it, or the smell, or the sight of it makes you queasy. How is it that you can have an attraction for something for years and years, and in one instant, radically change how you feel about it? What sort of bizarre sorcery is this? Why did it happen? Well, guess what? You experienced what is known in psychology as an associative anchor. What the Sam Hill is that? Well, stick around, and you'll learn why that happened, and how millions of people use that same formula to make definitive changes in their lifestyle for the better. Let's start at the beginning with what is an association and how do we develop them? Have you ever heard of Pavlov's dogs? There was a scientist named Ivan Pavlov. Ivan was studying the gastric secretions in dogs. While doing that, Ivan discovered something very extraordinary. The dogs were fed at certain intervals, accompanied by the ring of a bell. What he found intriguing is the dogs responded to the bell with the anticipation of being fed. The dogs would salivate when they heard the bell, without any food present or even the smell of food. So the sound of the bell linked them to eating, causing them to have an emotional and physiological reaction. If you have pets in your home, you probably notice this phenomenon when you've opened the cupboard door, used a can opener, or opened a bag of food. The critters come running with a, is this for me? Is this for me? Look on their face. So an association is a learned or conditioned link between a mental and physical response and a connected stimulus. In the case of Pavlov's dog, the mental and physical response was anticipation of being fed, which produced salivation. And that excited them. The anchor is the stimulus that triggers a certain response. In the case of the dogs, it was a bell. Some associations are very strong, and some are mild. But all associations are connected to our sensory perceptions, or senses. Often referred to as modalities, your modalities are visual, auditory, kinesthetic, gustatory, or taste, and olfactory or smell. These sensory perceptions are triggered by a stimulus congruent with the modality that senses the stimulus, creating a chain reaction. Let's go a little further on how different anchors are created. I already mentioned that the song that you hear and how it connects you to the moment in time when it became an anchor. The reaction to that song is an association to feelings in your past. So let's say you were in a relationship, feeling peak feelings. Let's say that they were positive feelings. And you heard that song. Maybe it was even your song. So you had the feelings, heard the song. Had the feeling, heard the song. Had the feeling, heard the song. Pretty soon, it's just like one of Pavlov's dogs. You created an auditory association between those feelings and that song. Make sense? How about visual associations? When I was a kid, I remember having encounters with the police that were not so pleasant. In California at that time period, it seemed as though if you were a teenager, especially if you were riding in a car with other teenagers, 
the police would pull you over to check you out. The sight of those flashing lights in my rearview mirror are burned into my memory. Even today as an adult, when I'm pulled over, I get a feeling of panic in the pit of my stomach from that negative association. Weird, huh? I usually say something to myself like, you didn't do anything wrong, why are they stopping you? For a second, it's like I go right back to that moment in the 70s when I was a teenager. What about kinesthetic? For me, one of the strongest is the feeling I get when I'm in the surf. Being in the ocean is one of my absolute favorite things to do. The feeling of the salt and the bubbles from the waves on my skin is exhilarating. Add the smell of salt air and the taste of the salty water, and I'm in heaven. I grew up in a beach town, and this association brings me back to some great times. Think about some of your visual, kinesthetic, or auditory associations and what they may be. Every man's memory is his private literature. Aldous Huxley. You probably have instances when positive or negative associations might come up when you see a familiar number come up on your phone. And it might give you a rush of excitement and anticipation about talking to them. Or it might go the other way and give you a less than wonderful feeling, depending on who it is. Food is also a very strong builder of associations when coupled with emotion. For some people, the smell of coffee jumpstarts their body as they make a beeline for the source. For others, it might be their mom cooking their favorite dish, and that associates the smell and taste of the favorite food with the emotion of love and their mom. All right, uh, stop the podcast for a couple of minutes, and I want you to focus on different associations, both positive and negative, that you have. What visual, auditory, external feeling, taste, or smell brings you back to a moment in your life? Associations transport us back through time and space in an instant. I had a really heavy thing happen to me years ago. I had a really close friend who I took in when he was young, and he was having a tough time at that point in his life. He and I were pretty much like a father and son. We trained together, and I mentored him. Years later, he lived in a different state, and I remember getting a call from him telling me he was headed to the hospital because he couldn't feel his legs. They took a huge tumor off his spine. It turned out to be cancer. He was a warrior. Although he fought it tooth and nail, the cancer took him from us. When I went down to see him in the hospital and they were releasing him into home hospice, I was listening to a song on my car stereo on the way down. I was thinking about him, realizing this would be one of the last times I would probably see him. The content of the song was strangely connected lyrically. On my way home, I was listening to the same CD and the song came up again. I felt heartbroken. I turned it off immediately. Many months later, I was at the gym in the middle of a bench press and the song came on. I didn't notice it at first, but... In the middle of my set, I felt like I wanted to give up. Now, if you know me, you know that's completely out of character. A wave of depression overcame me, and I felt whipped. I sat down on the bench, and my gym buddy looked at me and said, Dude, are you okay? You look like you just saw a ghost. I told him I needed a minute. Uh, I was getting ready to bolt out of there, and I started to use my internal dialogue and said to myself, Okay. You know what's happening. You know this stuff. Do you want to remember him with this feeling? Or do you want to remember the great times you had together? How much you loved him? That's it. That's how you really want to remember him. I made mental movies of us hanging out and laughing. In a heartbeat, my emotion completely changed. Before that song had ended, I had changed my association to that song and I've never had a negative feeling again when I think about him. I've heard that song many times since then, and I miss him very much. That was nearly 19 years ago. So here's something useful that you can do using associations. I'm going to show you how to create an anchor, one that will change how you feel the moment you engage it. Let's start small. You are going to set a success anchor. 
Think of a time when you were successful at something. It could be something minor, but make it something that meant a lot to you personally. Now picture it over and over in your mind's eye like a movie. As you visualize this, see precise detail. Where were you? What were you wearing? What did you see, feel, hear? Were there other people there? See it in complete detail. Try to engage as many modalities as possible. Next, I want you to come up with an anchor. It should contain an auditory sound and a kinesthetic feeling. The visual connection to these two modalities will be your visualization of the event you've picked when you won or succeeded at something that was huge for you. What you're trying to replicate is the emotional state or feeling at your peak moment. Some suggestions are an affirmation like, yes, or I feel unstoppable, relaxed, and alert. I am razor sharp, and a gesture that depicts a positive reaction like a fist pump, a clinch, or a raise of your hand, or a slap in the chest as you shout, yes. Now, once you have those, run these three elements at the same time. Now, repeat that. 10 times replicating the emotion you felt that day at the moment when you were in that peak emotional state, connecting these elements to your success moment in your personal history. After you've done this 10 times, get up, walk around, and interrupt your previous pattern. Now, if you fire off your anchor exactly how you programmed it, you should feel different. There should be a little rush of excitement. If you didn't feel it, Repeat it again 10 times now or later when you're more focused. This is how you set an anchor. I've taught this same process to hundreds of clients successfully. I've also used it myself for decades. I have one I used to use when I competed in martial arts competitively, and it still works. I use it when I need to rev myself up and put myself in a peak emotional state prior to teaching workshops or speaking engagements, or if I just need a little boost. This is so powerful. I have anchors to calm me down, juice me up, and help me focus. This also helps me with my dyslexia, which has challenged me since childhood. So here are the steps again. Step one, determine the state. Determine the emotional state you want to be in. Be very clear and specific about the state. Use positive, personal, and present tense orientation when telling yourself what you want. In effect, I feel confident, powerful, yet relaxed and alert. Step two, determine the anchor. Next, determine the anchor that you want to use. In creating anchors, try to utilize something you already do when in that chosen emotional state, if possible. Be sure the anchor is unique and includes the kinesthetic action, a personal positive present tense verbal statement or key word, and a visualized mental picture of you in that state performing the action while you're in that peak emotional state. Got it? Okay, step three, replicate the state as closely as you can. Once you know the state you want to be in, get back into that state. Utilize the modalities or five senses and submodalities in as much detail as possible in the form of a success history search and visualization so that you relive the experience as intensely, completely, and vividly as possible. See that very moment in your head. Step four, set the anchor at the moment of peak feeling. Once you are in that peak state, Fire off the anchor exactly as it should be. Step five, repeat the process identically. Now repeat the recipe for your anchor at least 10 times exactly the same way. This sets and confirms your anchor. Step six, interrupt your pattern. Take a break, stand up, walk around, get a drink, anything to interrupt your previous pattern while anchoring. Step seven, Test your new anchor. In this last step, test your anchor. Fire your prescribed anchor and note your emotional state. 
you should feel a noticeable difference in the way you feel. If not, repeat the process. If you feel your anchor is losing strength at any point in the future, reinforce your anchor by repeating this process. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of MindCast on associations and anchoring. Be sure to test the process I've outlined for you for yourself. I always tell my students and clients, don't believe me, believe yourself. Try it, use it, become better at navigating your life. Our associations transport us back through time and space in an instant. This week, remember to take notice of your associations in your life. You'll be shocked. If you have any questions, or if you want to have me work with you or your company or group, or you just want to connect, write me at kevin at thewinningmindset.com. To obtain my interactive digital program, How to Hack Your Own Mind, go to www.centerlinepress.net. Also, be sure to check my books out on Amazon. Until next time, this is Kevin Seaman, and this is Mindcast.